A good Thursday morning to you and yours. It's 9 o'clock. It's 94.9 and 99.1 The River. And my name is Darren Swenson, and you are listening to Our Town, brought to you by Decora Bank and Trust. It's a four-guest program on the show this morning. A little bit later on in the program, we will talk to Wenatchee County Development and Tourism Director Stephanie Fromm. She will give us an update on the Sunflower Child Care and Discovery Center project and some other things going on from an economic development and tourism perspective in the county. Walk on economic development uh, director Artie Cousy will join us later on in the program. Artie will talk about crazy days returning to walk on next Wednesday and Thursday. County fair season is still upon us. Next week, it's the Clayton County Fair. Anna Wilson will discuss the Clayton County Fair with us, but we'll kick off the program with Scott Herman from the Decorah Police Department. Scott will talk about National Night Out. It will take place next Tuesday night. Details coming now on our town on 94.9 and 99.1 The River. Coming up next Tuesday night is National Night Out, and uh, an event will take place in Decorah regarding uh, National Night Out. And here to discuss that is Scott Herman from the Decorah Police Department. And Scott, tell us what National Night Out is and how the Decorah Police Department will be involved. So the National Night Out obviously is a national campaign Um and we decided this year to join that campaign. The police department were, were going with um, Ben Krauss Gagne, who's with Helping Services for Youth and Families. Uh, we just decided to try this program. And it's basically a campaign that promotes community police relationships. Um, it's a family fun, free event where you just come out, you get to meet law enforcement officers and other emergency responders from the area. Um, have a fun night and uh, discuss any kind of issues or problems that they have, but for the most part, just bonding relationships. And when you talk about police community relations, it's been a topic of discussion for about uh, the last year, year and a half with what's going on in the world. How important is it now and is it more important than ever? So here in Decorah, it's always been very important. We've been very lucky to have a lot of support from the community and we appreciate that. We also work very hard at maintaining that support and maintaining that, that positive relationship. So it's always been on the top of our to-do list and uh, something that we've always wanted to keep going. Um, but obviously in this last year, it's, it's always a priority to make sure that that relationship continues as well. As for the specific event that will take place next Tuesday night, give us the details on that. So there's a lot of different things. First of all, um, it's a free event and it's family friendly. So um, everybody can come. Um, we'll have several games that, you know, young people can play. Um, we have some treats. We have ice cream treats. We have popcorn. We have some drinks like water and lemonade type stuff. Um, we are going to have live music there. Um, so I don't know if you've heard of John Ayabuni, who um, has a quintet jazz band, and he's uh, going to be coming and playing. Um, so it's just going to be a fun night where you can come, you can bring your lawn chair and sit down and listen to some great music. Um, the kids can play some games. Um, we have the Girl Scouts there that'll have some games as well that they can play. Um, we have a raffle that we're going give, to be giving away prizes. Um, obviously, we'll have law enforcement and other emergency services from the area there as well. So you get to meet those folks. Um, you can see their, their vehicles if you'd like to do that. Um, with Decora in particular, we have a lot of new officers, a lot of new faces in our department. So we're looking at this as an opportunity where the public and the community can kind of come and meet our new officers, see who we've got patrol the streets. So we're excited about it. And where will this event be held and uh, what are the hours of the event? Okay, so it's next Tuesday, August 3rd, and it's at Phelps Park in Decora. It's going to start at 5 p.m. and end at 7 p.m., so two hours. You talk about the raffle. I saw the Facebook post uh, yesterday with uh, you and Mayor Borowski. Uh, quite a few uh, things to uh, be raffled off, and uh, perhaps you can come away with some pretty cool stuff from the event. I'm, I'm hoping. You know, a lot of the stuff we we focused on that – Summer is not over yet. I know Nordic Fest is over and we kind of start thinking about back to school, but summer's not over yet. So we, we got a lot of outdoor stuff, a lot of uh, 
basketballs and footballs and camp chairs and backpacks and, you know, stuff to, to keep you outside and out uh, moving around. And I know this is a, you mentioned this is a national initiative. Uh, from what I understand, this is one of the first times uh, that a Cora police department will participate in something uh, like this. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, as far as I can remember back, we, the, the police department has not done anything like that. Um, it was about a year ago that uh, Chief Smussler approached, approached us all and said, why are we not doing this? This is something that is um, kind of a no-brainer. Let's get in with, keep in with the community and let, let's do that. So um, we've been kind of thinking about it for a while. So we, we just we went for it this year. And uh, give us a final invitation of uh, what's going on next Tuesday night and uh, how the public can have a little fun. Well, I think it's just a, a great night out. You know, like I said, we, we just finished the fair, which was a lot of fun seeing people out. Just finished Nordic Fest where we got to see everybody. Um, you know, we're just kind of wanted to keep feeding on that same energy where it's just a fun family event. Everything is free. Um, come on out. Um, I can't talk highly enough about the band that we have coming there. We're really excited about them. It's just a great time. Bring your lawn chair, drop it down. And uh, you won't be sorry. Uh, the band is excellent. Um, yeah, yeah, you might win a prize too. So um, it's just a great night. Come on out and you know meet meet the emergency services around here. So um, hope to see everybody there. Anything else uh, you want to pass on, just from uh, the uh, Decorah Police Department perspective? As long as you got a few moments uh, here uh, this morning, uh, anything you any message you want to send to the community right now? <laughs> Well, I'm just, I'm just so happy to see everybody's getting back out there. Um, you know, obviously with last year, with all the restrictions, people are getting back out there, but they're also doing it safely. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing the best of both worlds. I think at this point we're we're getting back out and getting back into our routines. People are also still being safe. You know, that's, that's one of the things we're looking at as well with the, with this event too, is it's outdoors um, we are going to take some safety precautions as well that way, but uh, I'm just proud of people, how they're getting back out and uh, getting back to, you know, where the, where we were before. Very well put. Uh, Scott, thanks for taking the uh, time this morning and uh, best of luck with you uh, for the event uh, coming up next Tuesday night. Uh, thank you and uh, all uh, of the Decorah police officers for what they do for our community. Well, thanks, Darren. I, I also uh, want to thank you for, for inviting me, but I also want to invite you to also stop down next Tuesday as well. Scott Herman from the Decorah Police Department National Night Out next Tuesday night at Phelps Park in Decorah from 5 until 7. County Fair season continuing in Iowa next week, and next week it is the Clayton County Fair in National, and uh, Anna Wilson uh, with Clayton County Fair Board joining us to preview the event. And Anna, of course, uh, the way the world was last year, uh, the event uh, couldn't happen. Uh, how excited are you to uh, bring it back here in 2021? Oh, we're we're very, very excited. Um, I can't, can't believe it's almost here already. It's less than a week away now officially we'll start officially to a week from tomorrow so we're we're getting ready and very excited to be joining the fair family as the rest of the fairs in the area have had their fairs already and uh, i know it's kind of organized chaos a little bit as a, a fair board member uh, with my family uh, being in the fair business uh, for quite some time way back when uh, and obviously there's a lot of things to do to get ready for a fair, but did you kind of miss that last year uh, knowing the fact the fair wasn't going to happen? Yeah, we, we started preparing uh, in May of last year, you know, slowly making some plans. Uh, and then June rolled around and the decision, the tough decision had to be made. And uh, it was, it was a big, big decision to be made, but we're glad to be here in 2021 now. And uh, you guys always uh, bring in some top-notch uh, entertainment from the uh, musical uh, end of things. And uh, that's, uh, this year's fair is going to be no exception uh, from what I see. Yep, we're excited to bring in Mark Wills on Thursday night. He'll be there, uh, great entertainer. And then Chase Bryant, a younger entertainer, will be there on Friday night. So two different age aspects, but we're excited to bring both of them in. And uh, one neat thing about uh, your uh, fair uh, is your uh, carnival. Uh, tell us about that. So the carnival is brought to us by Spectacular Amusements. 
And we're very excited again this year that if you pay admission to our county fairgrounds, you get all free rides, entertainment, everything is free. And you hope to get the carnival going on uh, Wednesday of next uh, week. And uh, it'll be uh, available uh, in the afternoon, Thursday and Friday, and then uh, Saturday and Sunday, pretty much available all day. As for the admission to the grounds itself, uh, how much is that? And uh, can uh, people uh, purchase uh, that uh, those uh, admissions in advance? So you can uh, purchase, definitely can purchase tickets in advance by uh, logging onto our website. We do not have a link to personally buy the tickets on there yet, but you can call the fair number on there and we'll get you hooked up with the right person to get the tickets in advance. Each day is a different price. So what I'm gonna tell people is head on over to our website and find all the information there. You can buy a season pass for $35, which covers all days of the fair. And uh, as for the grandstand uh, entertainment, is that a night by night uh, type thing? Uh, how does the the uh, purchases uh, work on that end of things? So, like I stated before, once you pay gate admission into our fair, so say you come Friday night for Chase Bryant, you pay that fifteen dollar fee, you get the concert for free. Yeah, that's always a, a cool thing, and uh, obviously uh, you got the uh, full. Uh, 4-H and FFA uh, schedules uh, on uh, on the uh, docket as well. And uh, I know uh, some fairs got that uh, going uh, last year, but uh, when you look at the, the reason for a fair and uh, the big picture reasons uh, for holding an event like this, uh, the young people are a big part of that, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so our fair, we're heavily, heavily focused on our youth. Uh, 4-H and FFA are the biggest part of our fair. We don't have hardly any open shows. We do not have any open shows for livestock. Uh, we only have the open class division at our county fair. So our main focus is our 4-H and FFA kids. We wouldn't be the fair we are without them. And uh, just off the top of my head, is there anything uh, we're missing? Anything else uh, you want to uh, pass along as uh, long as we got you uh, on the horn this morning? So we're, we're very excited to have everybody come to National Iowa this year. Uh, it's going to be a great fair. Sounds like the weather's going to be cooling down a little bit, so we're excited about that. Uh, you know, Wednesday night will be our barbecue with the crowning of the fair, new fair royalty. Thursday night is Mark Wills, and we do have motocross again this year. We're adding to that. Friday is a bunch of livestock shows that uh, you can come all day and then watch Chase Bryant that night. Saturday is the demo derby. And then all the most popular for the young kids, mutton busting right before the bull bash that night. And then Saturday is the uh, probably one of the biggest tractor pulls, truck and tractor pulls in the areas on Sunday morning. So we're excited for all that. And we, we just can't thank our sponsors and all the volunteers, the rest of the fair board and everybody that puts all their time in for this county fair. And folks that need uh, the information, uh, your website is very uh, thorough and complete. Uh, give us that website once again. So the website is brand new as of June 1st. So we're very excited. Oh. It's www.claytoncountyfair.com. Uh, it's, it's been a project, but we're excited. It's up and going and hopefully adding new things down the road. And it's very easy to navigate. Uh, even a Norwegian like me can uh, figure it out. So uh, that's <laughs> a, uh, it's a very well done site. And I want to give you guys the compliment on uh, that end of things. Uh, Anna, we appreciate you taking some uh, time uh, and uh, enjoy the fair. And we appreciate uh, all you do for uh especially the 4-H and FFA kids in our area. Best of luck with the 2021 Clayton, Out Clayton County Fair next week. Thank you, and come on down, and we'll love to, love to visit with you. Anna Wilson from the Clayton County Fair Board. The fair starts next Wednesday in good old National Iowa. Next week, Crazy Days returns to Wacon, and with us to discuss that is Wacon Economic Development Corporation Director Artie Cruzy and Artie, the event uh, returning to uh, walk on this summer and uh, next Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, tell us about what will be going on. Okay, well, thank you for allowing me to um, tell everybody about Crazy Days. Um, it is a two day event um, and we are bringing it back after many years of not having Crazy Days. The event will be August 4th and 5th, which is next Wednesday and Thursday. Um, we have over 28 businesses that will be participating. Um, it's not just our downtown and Main Street businesses, but um, 
just businesses from all over Wakan are jumping on the bandwagon to, to have some fun with this. Um, we also will have six to eight local vendors that will be setting up pop-up shops on our plaza down at the intersection. So that's exciting. It gives um, every, everybody a, a chance to um, participate and it gives shoppers the opportunity to have um, a lot more variety in, in, in their shopping. Um, we will also have WW Homestead Dairy and Kaimar Acres will be bringing their um, food vendor truck into Wakan for special extra treats. They will be setting up here in the Economic Development Chamber office um, parking lot. Um, this year, this time we are not closing down Main Street. I think that's been something that's been done in the past. Um, there's a lot of red tape always with the DOT and closing a state highway, but the city council has waived all the permits and they're allowing our businesses to do sidewalk sales. So many of the businesses will have um, bargain tables outside as well as, as bargains within their stores. So we encourage everybody to um, shop the bargain tables inside and outside. And so that's a lot of fun. Um, the businesses themselves will be advertising um, their own specials. Um, I think the, the newspaper will do a crazy day spread for uh, some of the businesses that have advertised with them. Otherwise, businesses have Facebook pages, websites, and so there's easy access to find out um, ahead of time what, what um, good bargains are going to be, be had on those days. Um, I guess for hours, um, I think I can remember shopping, um, getting up at five in the morning and going shopping by, by six, if you will, for crazy day specials. Um, the businesses themselves have opted not to do that, but they will be operating their crazy day specials um, within their normal business uh, hours. So if you're used to shopping with, um, these stores, you know their hours. Otherwise, again, check their, their website or their Facebook pages. And um, it's a good opportunity to let me tell you, to remind people that there are some businesses that are now staying open on Thursday evenings till seven. And those particular businesses will be offering their crazy day specials um, up until seven on Thursday evening. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping KNEI will be broadcasting live music out on the street and um, the extra specials that are going on within our restaurants and so forth um, are a good opportunity. You know, having events like Crazy Days, um, it, it, it just brings visitors to town, um, not just our locals, but the, um, we advertise in the uh, surrounding communities and the surrounding areas. So that's a good opportunity to have people in town. And what um, made this year the right year to bring this event back? Um, you know, there's there's good things happening in Wakan. Um, we have added some new businesses to our um, retail market. Um, I like to, and this fall we'll be adding a couple more. So I'm excited about that. And I like to think that slowly Wakan is becoming a destination, if you will, for area shoppers. Um, we have such a wide variety of um, retail businesses now that you can, you can come and you can shop and you can find everything you need. Um, I, I think the new businesses, uh, part of what I like to, I need to do is I, I don't just bring new businesses here, but I, I want to make sure that they're um, they're supported and that they are you know that they will be sustainable down the road. And so we are always looking for ways to um, market them and um, to bring um, opportunity, if you will, to everybody to come to town. And so these every business, I think, after last year, of course, and having a slow year, they were they're ready to to 
try not just new things, but maybe go back to things that have worked in the past. And Crazy Days was always special, was always fun. Um, it happens usually right before school starts. So it's an added extra bonus for, you know, shoppers, parents that need to shop for school things. And um, so that I, it, it just the timing was right for us. And it's been a while since we've done this. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, excited for my businesses. Um, you know, as someone in economic development, for me, um, I look at the bigger picture and you bring these people to town um, and they're supporting our retail businesses, but they also are eating in our restaurants. Um, they need to buy gas at our convenience stores and maybe they're buying groceries at the end of their day to take home. So the bigger impact for our community for, you know, is, is awesome. It's great. And bottom line, uh, here in 2021, consumers have so many choices and so many ways where they can purchase their goods, but still nothing beats that uh, small town business, that small town uh, commu community and customer service that those businesses provide. And uh, when you support those businesses, you're supporting the lifeblood of uh, your community. And uh, that's what an event like this is all about, I'd imagine. It is. Um, our community be, Our community has has really stepped up this year to support um, not only the new businesses, but our existing businesses. I think um, the business owners themselves are feeling really confident. And again, after last year, I think people are shopping for that personal one-on-one um, -on -one type of experience. And our business owners are able to provide that. Um, so that's, that's just that's a plus. It is for me, I know. That's how I prefer to shop. And I know it's a lot of uh, people in our area have that uh, mindset. And Artie, I'll just uh, give you one final uh, chance to uh, make an invitation for uh, folks to uh, come to Crazy Days next week. Okay, so I do invite everyone to please check out the Walk on Crazy Days Facebook page. Um, there you will find a listing of all the businesses that are participating and other details that will be going on um, those two days. And um, they can also call my office here at 563-568-2624. And I'd be happy to share any information that I know about any of the businesses and, and what they're doing. Um, I guess my plug is, you know, um, Crazy Days is just a great opportunity to shop till you drop, but have a good time doing it. All right, uh, Artie, we appreciate you taking the time and uh, joining us to talk about Crazy Days next week. And here's to uh, a great event uh, next week and a, a great uh, time and a great uh, okay. healthy economic uh, rest of the year for all the businesses and walk on. Thanks for taking the time this morning. It it's looking good. Thank you so much, Darren. Artie Cousy from uh, Walk On Economic Development Crazy Days next Wednesday and Thursday. Getting an update from Wanashee County Development and Tourism Director Stephanie Fromm. We've uh, discussed a few things with her, including the Sunflower Child Development and Discovery Center over the last uh, couple of months. And uh, Stephanie, uh, obviously work still uh, going on uh, regarding uh, that center. Give us a general update on where the uh, project is at from a fundraising perspective and where it needs to go from here. Yeah, no, we've been making great progress. Uh, we're, we have a pretty dedicated fundraising team that's just kind of focused on, on meeting with people and and telling the story, I guess. Um, you know, to date, we've, we've uh, between just local donations and some of these early grants that we have heard back from finally, well, we're just about $2.7 million, which is, uh, you know, understanding we hadn't really started until earlier in this year. Um, it's very promising. So, uh, yeah, no, I, a lot of great conversations, I feel like, um, because the national media is kind of starting to pick up on the importance of child care and especially those early years uh, in just a person's life. I feel like that has kind of helped us in a way because, you know, we, we are where we are right now because of um, our early years, too. So, 
And as we have this conversation on a Wednesday morning, I know your office sent out a, a press release uh, regarding uh, some uh, funding uh, that you received. Uh, tell us about that grant. Yeah, so we were awarded a uh, grant from uh, Rural Development, USDA, for, uh, it was a rural business development grant. Um, and we, uh, that, that grant specifically goes towards technical assistance. Um, it doesn't actually fund uh, the brick and mortar side. So I feel like it's a lot easier to raise funds for the brick and mortar, uh, but it's not always easy to raise funds to cover engineering and architecture costs. So that would be what this grant would be used for. It is a one-to-one -one match. We awarded uh, $99,000 uh, to go towards the project. Um, this would be the same grant that we were actually awarded last year to help fund the first couple of phases of our design work that we had done. And so we kind of go into phase three through five moving forward. Um, and that, that's what these funds would go towards. And it just like with anything, like when you uh, buy a house, there's the cost of buying the house, but there's the other costs that go along with it. And uh, seemingly there's a, uh, you guys are uh, looking at this from the big picture, knowing the fact that, uh, yeah, you got to build the brick and mortar, but at the same time, you got to put stuff in it and it's got to get to the point where you can build. And uh, seemingly your guys are covering all your bases. Is that fair to say? Yes, yeah, it's a very organized effort. I'll say that. I'm learning a lot along the way. Um, I feel like our team really just kind of balances each other out. There's some people that are experts in the numbers, and there's some people that are experts in the child care and then just project management overall. So I feel like I'm I'm the person kind of floating in between and managing personalities and workload. And uh, so that's that's been a good good place for me at this time. Um, we we're still hoping to uh, let the project for bid uh, early next year, so February-ish, January, February timeframe. Uh, so we'll have all of our construction documents organized by then and then uh, in hopes to break ground as soon as the, the weather allows us to, uh, and that would be in March, March, April. And as you continue to have uh, conversations uh, with the people about this uh, project, Based on the feedback that you're getting, what is making people the most excited about this idea? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think the employers see it from an employee uh, perspective and just trying to recruit. Um, I, you know, I, I I tend to still get emails from from individuals that are either from here struggling to find childcare because they're expecting, or um, maybe their their in home provider had closed and. And they're kind of put in a position right before the school year that they don't know where, where they're going to turn, you know, and then, um, you know, and then I have, I have new people kind of reaching out to noticing the articles and my name pops up and, and, and that's who they come to is uh, to me and asking where they should, where they should be looking. Um, we have a great agency. They're located here in Decorah. Um, it's called the Child Care Resource and Referral Agency. They actually work with all of the registered providers throughout Winnesheet County, actually throughout the state of Iowa, but our regional office is actually in Decorah, and they are such an awesome resource. They're the ones that know if there's any sort of shifting going on um, or spots that may be available, so they can actually help individuals um, uh, find, a, find a, a space for their children. And you look at uh, what you're dealing uh, with uh, here uh, regarding that whole issue of uh, child care, and we have talked before that this is kind of a unique idea, also having the uh, child care facility and some sustainable funding to keep the child care center going, and that's kind of a special uh, thing and a unique thing uh, nationwide. Have other people started talking to you about such uh, ideas uh, in their communities, knowing the fact that this is kind of an outside the box idea? Yeah, I've had a couple of counties reach out um, and they had just heard about this project and the plan. Uh, the state of Iowa um, had acknowledged that the plan was very innovative. Uh, here this last week, uh, we were able to host Debbie Durham from the Iowa Economic Development Authority. She's the executive director there. Uh, so we got to kind of give her a, a real brief community tour. We got to spend a couple of hours with her and you know we, we were able to visit some uh, downtown Decorah businesses and then 
um, uh, Stanley engineered fastening and, and Collins, but as well as Sunflower and, and talk to her about the community project that we are sort of spearheading at this time. And she seemed very uh, intrigued and was just amazed at, at how, um, how much is going on in Winnishik County, which is, uh, which is big for, for someone of that caliber to, to acknowledge that. So that was pretty neat. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have had some other counties reach out about the, about the plan. I'm actually a panelist on the upcoming Iowa Summit. Um, it's, a, it's a conference that's coming up for just basically community representatives, um, stakeholders, and economic development professionals. And that'll be down at Kirkwood in Cedar Rapids uh, mid-August. So when you get Excited a pat on the that. back from uh, state economic <laughs> development officials like that, uh, that has to be a pretty good feeling and uh, knowing the fact you're on the right foot, right? Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, uh, just the fact that we had a, a University of Iowa consultant research this sort of plan throughout the nation and she couldn't actually find a like business like this, uh, a like model. So I think the state is even acknowledging like this could be something that the state of Iowa gets gets behind to create a model or a template that then you can um, start integrating into other parts of the state of Iowa because you know the government is looking at uh, potentially taking you know your three year old programming away and starting to to dip in lower and lower which is great for our families and uh, to being able to afford care but ultimately you don't make money on your zero, one and two year olds. So when you put a nonprofit or a childcare provider in a spot where you're already kind of losing money on the, on the younger children and there's other funding coming in to provide care, it just puts them in a real loss situation. So just reaching out to just our local representatives, um, that, that meet with state officials, I think is very important to kind of tell that story um, because if we don't have childcare, uh, it's going to be pretty devastating. And, and that's where I feel most anxious about this is that we're trying to tell the story and communicate to our local people, but even at a state level, um, they're starting to acknowledge it and make it a priority for themselves. But it's, it's really like the boots on the ground effort that every community needs to get behind to say, we wanna be the most family friendly place in Iowa. Like, how do we start to become that? We have all this outdoor recreation, which is wonderful, but housing and childcare are something that our county is really struggling with. So how do we maximize, um, how, do, how do we maximize on those opportunities is really where I'm at, so. And you talk about that uh, seemingly, uh, you mentioned the local effort is so important, but the state needs to be involved uh, as a funding resource and a overall uh, kind of consulting resource, resource as well. Is that a, a fair way to put it? Absolutely. And uh, just some conversations, high level conversations that we've had so far. Um, they're very supportive of the project and specifically and some other projects that we had showing them around uh, the community as well. Um, tourism related efforts, building remediation efforts. I think, um, I think that, you know, it's all about relationships. And if you have a good relationship with someone, they'll kind of try to go to bat for you. And I, I'm hopeful that we can get some funding to do some fun projects with the Child Care and Discovery Center, but as well as helping with the housing situation that we're struggling with too. And that was an update on the uh, Child Care and Discovery uh, Center end of things. Obviously, you're in charge of uh, Winnishie County Tourism as well. Nordic Fest just got uh, done last week in uh, Decorah and uh, other events uh, taking place throughout the summer. How has the summer been from a tourism uh, standpoint? Uh, still got a lot of people coming to town? Yeah, um, we've been kind of keeping track of the hotel motel, and that's really the easiest metric to see how tourism is coming back. And that's a lodging tax uh, that gets paid to, uh, I mean, it comes back to the communities, but a portion of it does come back to the communities. Um, but I think uh, from a hotel motel tax uh, measuring standpoint, 
it, it is looking like it's bouncing back. Um, if you go out on the trails or the river or any camp campground, I mean, you're going to see a ton of out of towners and even local people enjoying, you know, the outdoors, which is, we are very fortunate to have a trail system like, like we do and outdoor recreation like we do. We're really kind of concentrating our efforts um, moving into the fall, we're developing a couple of new publications that'll be available to visitors. And that is the, uh, it's an outdoor recreation guide. So if someone comes in or is looking online for, hey, what could I do in the winter in Winnesha County, you'll be able to see, you know, trout fishing, open stream, uh, fly fishing, um, potentially some out, uh, winter camping uh, locations snowshoeing and then all your normal, you know, snowshoeing, cross country skiing, um, trail biking, fat tire biking types of things. And to really push that we're not only just a summer community, that we also have all these winter activities as well. And, and we're hopeful that we can kind of pull to start pulling together uh, some winter events that will kind of draw in the visitor during those sort of quieter months that we, we all have experienced. Just need a little rainfall so people can use the river a little bit more, I'd imagine. Yeah, I talked to some people yesterday and they were out there for about five and a half hours and normally it takes two and a half. So <laughs> I think they did a little bit of walking, but nonetheless, it's it's all it's pretty anyways, right? So <laughs> You betcha. And uh, anything from an economic development uh, perspective uh, that uh, you can uh, pass along uh, are you still uh, garnering a lot of interest of uh, people that uh, want to start uh, up and uh, do business in town? Yeah, I would say there's a lot of relocations happening. So people that are moving to the area from somewhere else and they're bringing their business with them. Um, it's a lot of, uh, you know, we just had a new cidery open up uh, in Decora, and Natalie and her husband are just wonderful people and they moved all the way from the West Coast uh, to Decora, Iowa. So and started up a, an amazing little business, if you haven't checked that out. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that there's a lot of relocations happening right now, and that's what I'm sort of trying to find available office space for those people or retail space. Um, but then, you know, sort of that digital marketing uh, is also pretty, pretty popular, which All is right. also something we need, you know, so. No doubt about it. Uh, Steph, we appreciate you taking some time to update on us on a variety of issues uh, here this morning. Uh, always good uh, talking about the good things going on in uh, Wintersheet County, and uh, we thank you for taking the time this morning. And uh, until next time, when we'll chat again and hopefully have some more good news to report. That sounds great. Thank you a lot. Stephanie Fromm, the Director of Wintersheet County Development and Tourism, giving an update on a variety of issues this morning. A thank you to our guest on the program this morning, Decorah Police Officer Scott Herman. National Night Out taking place at Phelps Park in Decorah next Thursday, or rather next Tuesday, I should say, next Tuesday from 5 until 7 p.m. I want to thank Anna Wilson from the Clayton County Fair. Begins next Wednesday in good old National Iowa. Artie Cousy from Walk On Economic Development uh, already discussed Walk on crazy days back again this year, next Wednesday and Thursday in Walk on. And we just discussed a lot of things with Winnersheet County Development and Tourism Director Stephanie Fromm. Don't forget each and every week this show is available on YouTube. Go to the Rivers Facebook page. We put up the link there each and every week. And it's also available just the audio version on the sound cloud page of Winnes Communications as well. So if you miss this show, if you can't get it uh, live at nine o'clock, there's various ways to uh, listen to the various interesting people that we have on each and every week on the Our Town program. Our thanks to our guest, our thanks to our sponsor, Decorah Bank and Trust, and our thanks to you for tuning in, for logging on, or for watching Our Town on 94.9 and 99.1 The River.